Welcome back. In this video, we will learn about crystal field theory and the yarn color effect. It is very very interesting topic uh, of uh, uh, crystal field stabilization energy calculation of uh, d-block elements. Especially d-block elements, elements are very very colorful. Why they are very colorful? For example, p-block elements are not colorful. Uh, d-block elements are s-block elements are also not colorful. Why d-block elements are colorful? Because of d-orbital splitting, d-orbital splitting and d-d transition. Okay, we will. This is explained by uh, crystal field theory. Crystal field theory explains the spectroscopic properties and the magnetic properties of transition metal complexes. Transition metal complexes. For example, copper is blue in color. Cobalt is pink in color because of D-D transition. Okay, now because what is D? D orbital. Let us first see D orbitals orientation. How the D orbitals are oriented? What is the shape of the D orbitals? For example, what is the W? W dumbbell shape. D orbitals are W dumbbell shape and, and it has two nodal planes. It has two nodal planes. Whereas P orbital. Yes. As P orbital only one nodal plane, L nodal plane, for example, L nodal plane, L equal to 1, 1 nodal plane, L equal to 2, then 2 nodal plane. Here there are 2 nodal planes. What, what do you mean by nodal planes? Nodal planes are planes where there is the electron density is 0. In the plane, electron density is 0. For example, this plane and this plane. There are 2 planes in which the electron density is 0. Nodal point is a point where the uh, probability of finding the electron is 0. The probability of finding the electron is 0 at the nodal point. The probability of finding the particle in the plane, the electron in the plane is 0. Okay. Now, there are 5 d orbitals. As we know from m equal to 2, m equal to 2, then uh, m equal to minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2, okay. So, there are 5 d orbitals, there are 5 d orbitals, and you remember, and this is a, a symmetric orbital, this is a symmetric orbital, Gerard orbital, they say, Gerard, in German, Gerard means center of inversion, they have center of inversion, if you draw a line from here to here, it will, uh, the positive sign will reach, okay. If you look at the p orbital, if you look at the p orbital, this is Munda because there is no center of inversion. If you draw a point through center, you reach opposite side, it will not be the same. The two will not be the same, therefore Munda not U. Okay. So this is the G type orbital because um, for example, S orbital, S orbital also G, Gerard orbital. You will see here E G orbital T to G. Okay. There are five B orbitals. What are those? Okay. So, I don't want to too much information on the board. There are 5 d orbitals, d z square orbital, d x square minus y square orbital, d x y, d y z, d x z. Okay. In the, let us look at the orientation of the lobes. There are 4 lobes, for example, there are 4 lobes. These lobes are oriented along the axis. For example, in d z square orbital, the lobes are oriented along the z axis. Whereas in the dx square minus y square orbital, the lobes are oriented along the uh, x axis, y axis. Whereas, whereas you make a point here, dxy. In the dxy, the lobes are in between xy plane. In between xy plane. Similarly, in dyz, the lobes are oriented in between yz axis. And uh, similarly, in the case of dxz, the Four, four lobes are oriented uh, in between the x, y, x, z axis. Okay. So, now let us look at when, uh, what is crystal field theory? D orbital splitting. What is crystal field theory? Crystal field theory is based on electrostatic interaction between uh, metals and ligands. Metal orbital and ligand. Ligands are considered as point charges. Ligands are, for example, considered as F minor. For example, you have ammonia. So it is like this negative, this is hydrogen positive, they are all 
dipole, charged dipole. When, when, uh, for example, this is an octahedral complex. Let us take it as an octahedral complex. Octahedral. Okay. The ligands approach from the ligands. Six ligands. Six ligands approach. Six ligands approach for water molecule. Water molecule dipole ion dipole. Dipole, dipole, dipole molecule. So the F minus molecule, there are six F, F minus molecule approach um, approach the central metal atom to form metal complexes. To form metal complexes, as you look at, see here, this is degenerate. The d orbitals are degenerate. Five fold degenerate. D orbitals are five fold degenerate. So when the ligands when the ligands approach the metal orbitals, metal orbitals, okay, metal orbitals, therefore they are they are approaching along the d z square orbital and d x square minus y square orbital. Therefore, these levels are biased. These the energy levels are biased uh, by 0 0.6 delta naught. With respect to the Bary center, with respect to Bary center, d x square minus y square d z square orbital are biased. Okay, whereas the other orbitals, p x y d v z d z x, uh, the, the energies of these orbitals are lower. See, as you see, the energy gap. This is 0 0.64 gap, and the energy lower. These orbitals energies are lower by 0 0.4 delta, and the energy gap between the two levels. This is in P to G, triply degenerate. P to G means triply degenerate Gerard orbital. E G means doubly generate, doubly degenerate. Yes, doubly degenerate orbitals. Okay, the energy gap between P to G and E G is given by delta naught is equal to 10 d cube, and d cube is the uh, unit. 10 d cube is the crystal field stabilization energy for octahedral complex. Okay, as you see, this this um, energy gap is more than this energy gap. Can you tell me why? Because the uh, these orbitals directly, these orbitals are directly in, uh, directly with the, directly in interaction with the ligands, directly interaction with the ligands, therefore they are raised much higher than the uh, lower lower by this one. Okay. Whereas in the case of tetrahedral complex, whereas in the tetrahedral complex, the ligands approach approach in this direction. That is uh, um, in between, in between, not along the axis, in between, not along the axis, in the Therefore, therefore, what will happen? These orbitals are e.g. orbital dx square because these uh, ligands are approaching uh, the metal atom, metal atom which consists of d orbitals, uh, not along the axis, not along the x, y, z axis, but in between. Therefore, these orbitals are nice. dxy, dxy, this is dxy, uh, y, z, z, x. These orbitals are more nice than, and these are these dx square minus y square d z square. Okay. So, the, there is a flip in the EG becomes D2G, EG is the ground state, D2G is the excited state here because the, the, now the D orbitals are sweet. Because of this, uh, the D orbital transition takes place. When it absorbs light, it, the electrons jumps from lower level to higher level. Therefore, it absorbs light in the visible region and these complexes uh, give colorful spectrum. Colorful spectrum, color, they are very colorful because of DD transition, because of this PD transition. Okay, whereas in the case of square planar complex, as you see in the square planar complex, there are no uh, ligands in the z direction. There are no ligands in the z direction. Therefore, what will happen is d z square will be very much lower because there is no um, uh, encounter. There is no ligand in the z axis. There is no ligand now. Square planar. There is no ligand. Therefore, this level is so much. The energy level is lower. Okay, therefore, this is like in the square plane the same. So, in the square plane, dx square minus y square is the same, and the dxy is the same, and the yz because dz square the energy level of dz square is lower. Therefore, this what is uh, this level is also lower. D 
D Y is a D index is a or, or also lower, and this is the uh, energy gap between the crystal field stabilization energy. This is where delta naught is the crystal field stabilization energy for the complex. Okay, now in year 2017, they have asked in the year 2017 cobalt complex, cobalt NH36 times 2 plus complex, uh, what calculate the state crystal field stabilization energy of this complex. Ammonia is a weak ligand. See, ammonia is a weak ligand and this is uh, the central metal atom is cobalt and D7, it is cobalt 2 plus, therefore D7, therefore crystal D7 means you will, you will put this is a, a high spin complex, therefore high spin complex D7 you write 1, 3, Okay, first you let us follow Hund's uh, run, rule of uh, maximum multiplicity uh, and then you put here 1, 1, 5 and next is 6, 7. Okay. Therefore, crystal field stabilization energy, there are 5 electrons, there are 5 electrons with 0 0.4 delta. Therefore, 5 into 0 0.4 delta and 2 electrons in the plus uh, you have to uh, minus because this is uh, 5 minus 2 into 0 0.6 delta naught therefore it will be uh, 2 1.2 therefore 0 0.8 delta naught is the crystal field stabilization energy for this complex okay so the, in the next we will see in order to understand the non teller effect in order to understand the non teller effect we need to understand the crystal field splitting diagram the energy level splitting of crystal field uh, crystal field splitting diagram should be known in order to understand the non teller effect these are all asked even in iit je uh, and also iit jam in even in msc uh, level gate csr entrance examination We'll continue. Good morning. Let us continue with the simple rules for determination of geometry and hybrid orbitals of complicated molecules. As I earlier said, there are two simple rules. Count the total number of valence electrons and divide by 8. Okay. We'll see a few more examples and the importance of electronegativity and uh, determining the geometry of the molecule. Okay, first XCF4. This is a very common question asked in GATE, NEET, CPSC, and also in various competitive examinations. For example, in XCF4, the uh, valence electron, count the total number of valence electrons. The valence electron is 8. Okay, 2 plus 6, 8. And for 4 bromine or fluorine atoms are there, 4 into 7, 7 is the valence electron for fluorine, therefore 36. 36, okay, the total number of valence electrons is 36 and divide by 8, we have divided by 8, 4, 8 star 32, therefore 4 sigma 1, 4 is the quotient that corresponds to sigma 1 and 4 by 2, 2 lone pairs, therefore the geometry, the hybridization is sp3 d2, okay, sp3 d2, that is 4, 6, 6, it, uh, it is the uh, octagonal geometry, if there is no unpaired electron, if there is no unpaired electron, it, will, it corresponds to octagonal geometry because there are unpaired electrons here. Okay, the there are two lone pairs. There are two lone pairs, non-bonded non pair of electrons. Since bonded lone pair lone pair repulsion is great, lone pair lone pair repulsion is great. They are arranged in axial um, in the uh, diagonal position. They are placed here so that the minimum there will be minimum repulsion. Okay, this is the correct geometry. If you want, you cannot put here because this is 90 degree. Okay, 90 degree lone pair lone pair repulsion is very great. This structure is not possible. Again, here we have put uh, lone pair in the axial position. Uh, here the axial, the axial position is here again 90 degree only. And here again, this is 90 degree. Whereas in tetragonal bipyramid, it is different. 120, 90. Here, all 90. Axial, equatorial, everything 90. Therefore, these are also, we both are same only. So, this is the possible geometry of XCF4. Okay. So, this is, next, the next case, 
I was shown water molecule and OF2, OF2, OH2, the central atom is oxygen and the bond angle is 1 out 9 degree and the bond angle is 1 out 2 degree. Why? There is a decrease in bond angle. This is a very very common question in uh, most of the um, exam, um, competitive examination or some other molecule they will give. But the concept is same. For example, oxygen, fluorine is more electronegative compared to oxygen. Compared to oxygen, hydrogen, compared to hydrogen atom, fluorine is more electronegative. Therefore, the bonded pair of electron is attracted towards fluorine. Okay, so it is attracted towards fluorine atom. It is attracted here. The bonded pair will be here. Therefore, bond pair, bond pair repulsion. Bond pair, bond pair repulsion is more here. Here, the bond pair, bond pair repulsion is less here. Therefore, the bond angle shrink by 2 degree, 1 or 2, the bond angle is reduced because of fluorine is more electronegative and the lone pair is shifted towards, the bonded pair is shifted towards the fluorine atom, therefore bond pair, bond pair repulsion is less. This is a uh, very common question, they will ask, they will give some other molecule but the concept is same. So you remember that the bond pair, bond pair repulsion is less when uh, the central atom is connected to more electronegative atom. Okay, now let us come to BF2, BF3. What is the geometry of the molecule? You can write several uh, geometry, several geometries, uh, several structures. Uh, F in the equatorial position, BR in the equatorial um, axial position. But this is the possible structure I have written. Uh, this is the tetragonal, sorry, trigonal pipe pyramid. And in this case, uh, as I said, 120 degree. As earlier said, and this angle is 90 degree with the plane. Okay, this angle is uh, 90 degree. Okay, so, so here also again, because of fluorine atom is more electronegative, and uh, the lone pair, the bond pair is uh, uh, attracted towards the fluorine atom. Therefore, uh, bond pair, uh, bond pair, bond pair repulsion is less if it occupies axial position. Okay, so it is here common rule that the, act, the electronegative atoms should be placed at the axial position. You just remember that. Next, another case of um, uh, predicting the geometry of the molecule BrO3 minus. In the case of BrO3, the valence electron is uh, of the central atom is 7 and 3 oxygen atom. Oxygen, uh, uh, oxygen there are 6 electrons. Therefore, uh, plus 1, minus is there. Therefore, 1 electron is added. Therefore, equal to 26. Okay. The total number of valence electron is 26. And uh, divide by 8. 8. Divide by 8. 3 times 24. Therefore, 2 by 2. 1 lone pair. 3 sigma bonds. There are 3 sigma bonds. 1 lone pair. Therefore, Br. 1 lone pair. I have drawn here. There are 3 sigma bonds. Okay. And, uh, and again, you have 7 electrons. 7 electrons will be bromine. 7 means 2 is there, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, 5, therefore uh, 6, 7, another 1 electron, therefore it will form, form a double bond and minus O minus and this is pyramidal geometry, therefore this is sp3, what is the hybrid of, hybrid orbital of a BRO3, this is a very common question, uh, they ask in gate examination as well as in all um, JEE, SP3 because uh, SP3 uh, yes SP3 hybridization this is similar to uh, ammonia pyramidal geometry and also it is isostructural build uh, for example they will ask BrO3 is isostructural build XeO2 I, I, o, ICl2 minus they will ask similar uh, they will ask so BrO3 minus is isostructural build Br uh, XeO3 or I, uh, both are pyramidal geometry. Thank you for watching.